Hello everyone and a warm welcome to the Directions Live Online webinar series by Astrid Malaysia. My name is Caleb Sung and I'm your host for today's session. Today's presenter is Luke Ying Ping, our Senior Industry Consultant with the Enterprise Consulting Team of Astrid Malaysia. Without any further ado, I shall pass the presentation to Luke. Over to you, Luke. Thanks, Caleb, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. Allow me to continue with our topic today. The Geo-Precision Agriculture, Tools for a Smarter and Predictive Farming. Today, we will discuss on the third part of the Geo-PA packages. That is the replanting planning solution. So when we talk about oil palm replanting, let's first look at the life cycle of oil palm. As you can see from the chart, shown and uh, published by the NPOB, oil palm can grow beyond 25 years to maybe 40 and 60 years. The commercial has set the replanting period at 25th year still to the oil palm is reaching the end of its economical life cycle. If you continue to keep the palm, the input of fertilizer and outkeep maintenance that you put in, in comparison to the output that you get on the production and tall palm condition, it's not economical and viable to maintain in long run. So we chop down the palm and replant. And throughout the time, we learn from mistake and go through a big fall. This is a very valuable uh, experience. And import the important point here is we should not repeat this uh, mistake in the new cycle of planting. That's why the replanting stage is crucial. It's a, it's, it is a turning point to make the things right. And this also to ensure the optimum production in the, uh, in the coming 25 years. So replanting can, can start as early as a two years before the actual replanting. So the question is whether we have any tools that we can use to pre-plan the design of the replanting for the next 25 years. Before I go further into a replanting uh, planning application, let us just quickly recap again what we have presented under the GOPA solution. If you missed the webinar section, no worry. We have recorded this as mentioned by Keller. Then you can browse to Ashley Malaysia event page to rewatch it again. So uh, let's uh, rec uh, quickly recap on the first one, the area salmon solution that we presented uh, two months before. It's a ma master record of land bank and planting profile in the common view dashboard, then accessible by anyone, anywhere, and anytime throughout across your organization. The area summer application uh, is a fundamental step for you to move into the digital transformation era. This ap ap application consi consists of two parts. The first is a easy to configure dashboard that you can create your digital twin of your area statement on cloud, showing this master record on land use changes and planting profile. All your data and planting statistics are validated through the Agis software. This is in order for you to synergize your productivity at optimal level. And the second part of the solution is Infield mobile map. So area statement web map, you can make available into the field worker mobile phone, working online and offline, showing the detail of area statement and planting profile for references and assistance in the field. So all the basic operation information is at your fingertips. So apart from uh, presented uh, uh, application on, on the first one, we have we have also presented the second uh, application on FAP harvesting monitoring solution. This solution is recording the harvesting data to be up to block and plot basis. So enable the gap analysis for actionable decision making. The harvesting monitoring solution comprising comprising of two parts also. The first part is Banchik mobile apps. Uh, we use a configurable form centric mobile apps leveraging on ArcGIS Survey123, creating, capturing, analyzing FAP harvesting data. So FAP harvesting data will be uploaded with GPS location, site photo, harvesting times to a central system. So from the Banchik uh, input form, data will be consolidated 
to uh, uh, to show to be shown in the FAP production dashboard. This is the second part. The dashboard is to monitor the production in all the indicator. So today we going to uh, drill down to the replanting planning solution. A replanting planning solution is a set of two apps and best practices we develop, especially for your replanting planning and deployment. So I will run through the detail of replanting planning solution that we package into this uh, job position agriculture package. This is for plantation owner to rapidly deploy the application for precision farming. So before we drill down to the application, let us first look at the few challenges faced by the plantation operator during these replanting stages. So the first one, a lot of company have a very comprehensive SOP, even the best management practices or the GAP, good agriculture practices for replanting. And then, uh, but there is no tool available to intensively monitor all these uh, practices uh, to be implemented on the ground. Experienced cadet and supervisor who are, can effectively, effectively implement the replanting uh, uh, procedure is, has, is hardly to source from the labor market. Then there is a, a, a no pre, uh, progress visibility and no holistic view on the replanting progress at the field level. Issue will highlight from the field supervisor based on personal experience to the person in charge. And then top management often need to fly over to the replanting area using helicopter to do the area survey on quarterly and half yearly basis. This is in order for them to get an overview on the de development progress at the, at the, at the designated replanting area. So often the last challenges is often we have a overclaim issue by contractor. So, but we have no solid proof to validate and overcome this. So today, I would like to uh, the question uh, whether we have a available technology that we can help in this. Uh, I like, actually like very much on the MPLB quote on this uh, in the oil palm replanting uh, handbook. A little step to a giant leap. A small step that we venture today will bring us a fruitful outcome for the next cycle of planting. So what we have in the uh, GPA solution, under this uh, replanting planning solution, we have four parts here. The area photo processing, replanting design, lining assistance, and claim validation. So the area photo processing is actually generating plantation area overview and the digital terrain model quickly from the drone for visual, visualization and analysis. The second part of the replanting tools is the, the design. Our GIS system is capable to pre-model the important element in replanting, the planting density, terraces, road, and we can rerun the model in this digital twins uh, environment. And you can adjust the design parameter before we want to deploy it into the field. And, and the third part, third part is lining assistant. You can always always have access to your maps and deploy your pre uh, plan design to the field level. And then last but not least, but is the claim validation. Again, use the drone to capture dispute structure on the ground to validate over the contractor claim to enable the uh, audit and actionable decision making. So the benefit for this uh, solution is cost control on the replanting uh, activity using drone image to monitor the replanting progress. Return of investment as a drone is actually relatively cheap to deploy today. And of course, this, all this will increase your efficiency with area survey and bring back thousands of area images from field quickly with an hour operation for audit. So I'll further showcase in the next, next couple of slides, how, we, how our technology can be applied, starting from the inventory uh, to the baseline for contractor claim, and land planning and budgeting based on the pre-design model, filling and shipping claim monitoring, pre-terracing, 
and compassion for competitor claim, lining and planting, and last but not least, the new planting area statement declaration. So inventory. One of the principal form for digital transformation has been the utilization of drone technology. We have seen a first hand on how planter and agronomist use drone to quickly bring back few data on demand, improve their efficiency, while simultaneously boost their yield and productivity. We will provide end-to-end -end application on drone op operation, starting from the tasking for flight plan up to the auto portal processing, image analysis, and lastly, data dissemination through our AGIS platform. Traditional methods such as the aircraft, helicopter, and satellite image has only resulted in low quality images, not to mention on field survey, that completely lack of visible and insight into what is happening in the field. Additionally, the traditional methods are relatively expensive, time consuming, and really result in positive ROI. But on the other hand, drone technology has been instrumental in pro producing 2D maps and 3D images across thousands of hectares of planted land. Data can be um, collected timely in the timely manner, effective and if it, uh, efficient, efficient and effective, and data can be collected in high accuracy for visibility. And lastly, the aerial images is allowed cross-checking at any time. So this map and topo topographic, topographical models is just two important elements that we can use for replanting redesign. So from the aerial images, we can generate the baseline, such as the palm sighting for future claim validation uh, purposes. Existing palm can be categorized in up to block and block. So land clearing can be controlled and pay for payment uh, based on the um, uh, categorized that we actually put in place. 3D data on DTM can be further uh, categorized uh, generated and categorized based on different slope orientation for planted. This is to identify the plantable and unplantable area. Plantation owner will know exactly what is the total hectare based on different topography, such as the undulating uh, for uh, for slope that more uh, less than five degree, uh, uh, slightly hilly area for slope that uh, around six to eight degree, hilly area. 9 to 15 degree, very hilly area, 16 to 35 degree, and uh, area that more than 35 degree for not suitable uh, planting area. So we will know exactly uh, uh, what is the hectare that uh, comprised in this uh, different different category. So all these uh, parameter we can actually further adjust. You can categorize to three class or even more class based on your business need. So you, you will know exactly the area that can be planted and area that cannot be planted. For example, the area that more than 25 degree. This is to meeting uh, the authoritical or uh, legal requirement or even for your certification like uh, M uh, MSPO uh, certification requirement. So planting density can be modeled as well based on the planting distance that uh, suitable for your company. And using the hexagon method, we can actually put the uh, pump into the, uh, we can site the pump into the given land area. This is in order for you to know the optimum den density can be achieved in, the, in this given land. So you can also use in the tri triangular method for the plant, uh, plant placement. So you can actually decide what, what planting material or seedling is best to your business need and adjust the planting distance with the maximum from overlapping allowed. So with this, 
you can actually uh, get the indicator for optimum density that is actually available for this uh, this particular length for replanting. For hilly area, terrace can be modeled against uh, based on the planting distance, where the terrace or some uh, company call it platform, uh, that you can actually decide your platform width area, slope area, and then as well the infield terrace area, the uh, another terrace in between the terrace. So you can again adjust the terrace width or even prolong the carrying distance for mechanization consideration. Other than other info also can be uh, calculated. Uh, for example, here is a road network. So road network, then you can actually calculate the existing road network whether it's actually within your uh, SOP uh, guideline. Uh, for example, 200 meter per hectare. So total length by type or by different road type can be calculated, and this is enable you to uh, uh, build the uh, budget for future graveling cost, graveling cost estimation. Also for the drainage network and density, even the river uh, riparian zone for conservation area. So this will meet your sustainable palm oil and all the legal requirements. And you can also uh, calculate the covered bridges siting for future costing and repair, as well as nursery siting. So the three siting can be uh, calculated based on the driving distance to block, and then whether the nursery is actually placed near to the water source, whether there is a fertile soil availability for the for the um, uh, packaging of the uh, uh, ceiling for germinate uh, after the germination, and also the electrical supply. So whether you need to deploy a new genset or you can actually pull the uh, the electrical supply from your uh, housing complex. So all this uh, indicator can be actually calculated to form a, a figure that uh, put, uh, put into your budgeting. So with all this uh, information available, you can actually uh, uh, populate everything onto, your, onto a common uh, dashboard uh, to give you the design uh, density uh, and, and indicator, and then you can also put in your uh, SOP for, for a comparison with, uh, to, uh, to, to, to compare whether your SOP is actually uh, uh, um, in line with your with other, either your design is actually in line with your SOP. So if this, uh, all, all this, it can uh, form the replanting budget. So the next step is uh, filling and chipping. So after you have all this in, in very inventory data as a baseline, so palm filling and, and chipping can be controlled by block and plot area. Supporting map can be generated from contract, for contractor claim verification. Contractor may report the palm filling number based on their interest. Uh, you will have your all the baseline for counter check against this. So you now is generating a systematic way for land clearing according to your plan. So after the land clearing, it's now to deploy your pre-designed uh, replanting planning, planning into your field. The design can be downloaded to a mobile phone, working online and offline in the field for lightning assistant. So this will guide, uh, serve as a guide for your terraces uh, alignment and construction, and planting point and pegging. So the pre <clears throat> the pre design planting uh, planting peg will be used for uh, for the letter hauling and planting progress. So after your seedling uh, is ready uh, to be replanted, the new uh, sensors should be done after the planting uh, done on the ground. And this is actually to form the new planting statistic for declaration letter. So when everything is done, a replanting area segment can be uh, put to your management for endorsement. 
and declare for the use across organization. So the so the visibility uh, uh, progress uh, for replanting, we create a positive image for a certified sustainable palm oil, so we, uh, example for the surveillance audit, uh, and under the certification, uh, for example, like RSPO, MSPO, ISPO um, certification. So this provides a traceability uh, up to the uh, few detail on your replanting activity. <clears throat> so let's look at the value prop uh, proposition to uh, uh, planting pre-planning with and without uh, with and without the uh, pre-design. And what is the optimal level that you can actually achieve? For profitability point of view, example that your company SOP is to have uh, 136 36 uh, stamp per half. But what you actually can uh, uh, without the pre-design, uh, pre um, maybe you can achieve 130 stamp per half on the ground. So what is the shock coming from the six palm per hectare for your income generation for the next 25 years? So with the land bank approximately uh, 200,000 hectare, you can actually uh, potentially short of 86.4 million from your crop production budget. Uh, this is uh, per year. While for the expenses calculation, if your estate is actually uh, declaring uh, full stand based on the uh, SOP, and then without the system verification on the shop, for the same example again, uh, there is a shop, six pump shop in the field, but they actually uh, declare the full stand. So what would be the outkeep maintenance uh, potentially cost to the overspend? And then that is actually uh, from the same uh, 200,000 uh, hectare of, of land bank, you can actually potentially overpay uh, 15.6 million uh, per year. So for five years down through the road, the profit, uh, profitability and expenses variation will uh, potentially sum up to 510 million uh, due to the uh, planning is actually not uh, closely monitored and not uh, pre-designed. So what will be the uh, future uh, after you have all this digital record for plantation? What kind of uh, application you can actually develop for this? Uh, let me just show you a quick uh, demo on this. From the RGB uh, drone, you can actually further, uh, when you have all these uh, palm point, you can further uh, invest on multispectral camera to enable the palm health uh, for vitality index based on the well-known uh, parameter like NDVI, NDI, and OSAV. So this uh, vitality index will allow the agronomists to further prioritize their U for improvement program to dedicated area. So you can use a simple tool to do a comparison on the data set that you have. And then the agronomist can actually uh, using uh, what they plan, they can use in the online uh, tool available to further query and and uh, do analysis uh, prior, to, uh, prior to the detailed plan or the mitigation measure. So all this can be done if you have a complete data set uh, on the digital twin of your plantation data. So to wrap to wrap up the presented uh, the presented uh, presented job position agriculture uh, solution is actually uh, what we package into the uh, solution is 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 uh, the below three the area statement solution again the an overview of your area statement solution assessed by anyone in your organization anywhere and anytime. So the second is the FAP harvesting monitoring solution, capturing all the FAP harvesting data quickly and securely from the field for further analysis. And what we have uh, presented uh, in today's webinar, replanting planning solution, a pre-model replanting design for budget budgetary indication and in-field guidance.
So the Argis uh, RGIS platform uh, is actually capable to integrate all type of data from the imagery and map and so on to the tabular data, unstructured, uh, unstructured data, real-time data, uh, LIDAR, BIM, uh, to the full, full, motion full motion video. So it brings this together to an abstraction layer to create a common language of map and 3D things and by the, by the mental layer of features. You can match out all this data in a, a inter, integrate dynam, dynamically and generate the analysis meeting your digital farming needs. We can uh, deploy uh, easily deploy uh, different capability in uh, ArcGIS platform to generate solution for your organization. So all this application is user friendly and configurable. When we say configurable here, is you doesn't need uh, any uh, knowledge in the programming. You can actually uh, integrate them to uh, form a solution for your for your needs. And I just uh, building a three uh, fundamental system in one platform. There is a system of record, uh, system of engagement, and system of insight. The system of record address the real world modeling challenges by maintaining the baseline information on, on all your assets. The system of engagement share the data store within the system of record, a broader group for, for a broader group of users to address the field to office collaboration and challenges. This increases the accuracy of your system of record and ensuring operation staff have the most up-to-date understanding of a system of asset. The asset status, resource location, and system event. The system of insight take the information from the system of record and engage. Use it as a platform to analyze to derive better understanding on how the overall agriculture activity is operating and how to pep, uh, better prepare and predict the future state of farming so organization uh, can be can, can be used effectively this address the integrated multiple system challenges by bringing real-time capability and business intelligence driven analytics to better understanding your data pattern when deployed across and use harmony with each other the system of record, engagement, and insight as a powerful framework for managing modern agriculture. Real-time engagement to key uh, and try uh, when you're trying uh, tying this system together. And then from that, from the strong uh, foundation and platform, you can actually provide further solutioning toward your digital farming journey. Some example of the use cases could be you can. Uh, deploy a, a solution for sustainability, mm. water management, uh, soil and foliar sampling, uh, fleet, manage, uh, fleet monitoring on the supply chains and traceability, public health and safety, and pest and disease uh, control. Mm. Uh, before I end my presentation, let me just share the solution list for, for the present, uh, presented uh, geo precision agriculture package for replanting planning. First is the aerial uh, images and auto photo processing. We are using the drone to, uh, drone to map uh, app, uh, application. For the palm counting, uh, we are actually uh, deploying the MV cross sign module uh, uh, extension that integrate directly to ArcGIS. Replanting design, we are using the uh, ArcGIS Pro with 3D and spatial analysis. Analyst, sorry. Uh, Lightning Assistant, we are actually using the ArcGIS Explorer mobile apps and replanting dashboard, one build system that using the ArcGIS dashboard. This is a sum of the resources and references and contact that you can uh, get further info on the job position agriculture solution. Uh, Please feel free to visit to our website and click on the link uh, or even give us a contact uh, if you need further uh, explanation. With this, I end my presentation and hang over back the floor to Keller for Q&A.
So thank you. Philip, over to you. Thanks, Luke. That was an interesting presentation on the dual precision agriculture for replanting planning solution. So we have had a couple of questions come true. If you have been listening intently to look and you haven't had the chance to type out your question, there's still time so you can do that in the questions pane. Uh, I think one of the attendees have asked uh, Luke, is there any possibility of removing the tree to get the DSM, which is a surface model? Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, actually, uh, from your drone, they're actually capturing the DSM, the digital surface model. So from the digital surface model, you can actually pre-model it become a digital terrain model. So this is actually, uh, yes, it's possible. It actually can be done within, with our drone to map uh, application. So you can get we are actually uh, pre. We, we are actually uh, capturing the replanting area uh, two years or one year before the actual replanting, and then you re, uh, you get you get the DSM uh, to generate the DTM. So the DTM, the terrain model, is the model that we actually use for the design. I hope that I answer your question. Uh, over to you, Ella. Thanks, Luke. I hope that answers your question. And the second one, we'll move on. Um, can we do the design before felling as the blueprint should come in before felling? Yeah, thank you for the question again. Yeah, as I actually uh, uh, presented, this uh, a blueprint of the design is actually done uh, two years before or one year before the actual replanting. So we design everything, uh, put all the indicator for your budgeting, replanting budget. You submit the budget for your management approval, and then only that the actual replanting will come after that. So uh, the answer is yes. We actually done all the pre pre planning uh, two years ahead uh, ahead with the actual replanting. So I hope this uh, answer your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luke. And um, on to the next. Uh, what type of drone supported uh, by drone to map application? Okay, uh, thank you for the question again. It's a great question. Uh, actually, uh, the drone to map supported various uh, drone unique. So the important thing is actually uh, we need to have your uh, uh, the prerequisite is we need to have your uh, latitude, longitude, and altitude to be uh, abandoned into the metadata of your uh, images. So this format, when this format is actually available, so the drone to map uh, application mm -hmm. can actually process all the drone uh, aerial images uh, to generate the auto photo. So uh, we actually support a wide range of drone type uh, in the market. So uh, to get a, a overview, uh, to get the detail on this, please visit to our website and look at the drone that supported under the drone domain. So thank you for the question. Hope this answer. Over to you, Caleb. Thanks, Luke. And uh, moving forward on to the next question. Is there a way to filter out the canopy height of palms to determine the actual ground terrain. Okay. Uh, thank, uh, thank you. Thanks again for the question. So this, I think, is related back to the DTM and DSM uh, 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 parameter that we actually discussed. Um, basically, it's yes to uh, from the drone. You generate the DSM and you eliminate the canopy surface. Right, I hope that answers your question uh, well enough. Thank you, Luke. And um, 
I think on to the next question as well. Hi, uh, when you fly the drone, what is the flight altitude uh, that you set to capture the image? And uh, also a second question related to this, will replanting lining be done by the app itself or do we have to manually uh, do it separately? I'm sorry, Caleb, sorry, uh, over... I, I, I actually did, uh, Caleb, I actually disconnect. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you repeat the question again? No, no worries, Luke. So the, uh, I'll just one by one. Uh, so when you fly the drone, uh, what is the flight attitude uh, that you set to capture the image? Okay. Um, you can actually, uh, um, basically it's the accuracy of the DTM that generated. So um, uh, anything, uh, I think with, with your planting distance of uh, 9 point, uh, nine meter, so anything uh, below uh, one meter is actually acceptable. So you can actually set your uh, flying height uh, at uh, 300. So to capture the data uh, for a DTM, that is actually one meter. So uh, of course you can actually fly, fly lower. So you can actually get a detail of your uh, images so that you can actually uh, count counting the count. So of course you can actually uh, uh, fly at 150 or 120 uh, meter, so that you can actually have a visit, uh, ground sampling distance of uh, uh, three centimeter to five centimeter. So this is actually very good uh, resolution, uh, not not only to generate the elevation model, but also uh, good for you to uh, do the pan counting because the clear images. Uh, area area images is actually what you see and what you get. So if you if if low quality images is actually collected, then the quality of your uh, counting is actually uh, uh, depleted. So what is the uh, uh, next next uh, question again? Next question would be: uh, Will replanting lining be done by the app itself or? Uh, done manually separately. Uh, all this we actually, all this we actually deploy on the uh, RGIS uh, job processing tools, and then we have uh, pre-model this job process processing tool into a flow. So basically, you just uh, put in your parameter, and we run the model. It can generate the result uh, as per uh, presented uh, just now. So the answer is uh, it's actually uh, uh, run automatically inside the job processing model. Okay, over to you, Caleb. Thanks, Luke. I hope that answers your question. And uh, there's one more. Um, there are a couple of questions on this. I'll we'll do it one by one. On the replanting palm point, how do we ensure the position accuracy? Uh, to centim centimeter accuracy uh, to reduce the GNASS noise. Okay, um, th thanks for the great question again. So again, uh, the equipment that you use is actually uh, based on, uh, the accuracy is actually based on the equipment. So of course, uh, when we say uh, for lining assistant, so you don't throw away your lining method. Uh, so this is the lining assistant to tell you that uh, this area, uh, this line, you actually should have a palm uh, holding for your replant for your uh, for your planting. So of course, if you want to get the high accuracy, uh, there there are two a uh, few ways. One way is you uh, deploy your uh, um, your planting design into your mobile phone. So your mobile phone have to actually uh, not using the internal GPS uh, signal uh, because the internal uh, phone GPS signal is actually uh, with the accuracy of two to three meters. And what you can do is you actually connect to a Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth uh, GNSS uh, receiver. And then if you have a total station for you to do a correction, that will be to a sub-centimeter accuracy. So that, of course, that 
uh, incur additional investment on the equipment so that you can actually uh, you can actually have a high accuracy of planting point. Otherwise, uh, the the design will serve as a guideline for for your lining gang uh, for them to actually know that uh, this area uh, is actually should have uh, say hundred and uh, one hundred and thirty seven pound total to be uh, packed into the ground. So the lining gang they have a pre uh, understanding on the ground condition before they actually do the lining uh, pegging, and all this is actually your position to your mobile phone. So I hope this answers the question. Over to you, Keller. Thank you, Luke. And uh, from the same participant as well, um, ask how to utilize the drone multispectrum to have the soil condition before and after manuring. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the uh, good question. Uh, the drone actually, uh, from the multispectral image, we can actually, uh, uh, normally we are used for the tree health analysis on the foliar. And for the soil, uh, normally we actually use for the uh, moisture. So when you actually talking about the soil, the soil uh, uh, condition, uh, and then the fertility, so this is still need to go back to your soil sampling. So, it, so the soil sampling uh, data need to be collected from the field and then uh, either using the IoT sensor or you send your data to laboratory for analysis on the new, uh, soil nutrient. And then uh, this has, has to be done either from the IoT or to the lab. Then all this data you can actually um, uh, record and uh, integrate together with the application so that you have more insight on the field condition before you can actually uh, roll out your uh, fertilizer uh, manuring program in the field. So uh, multispectra, uh, of course, uh, the sensor is actually uh, getting the radiation with the limit. So not everything can be actually monitored. Uh, um, maybe uh, in future, the advancement of technology, they can actually uh, uh, capture more thing on this. But I think time being, uh, the effective way is still uh, field uh, monitoring on using the IoT sensor or sampling sent to laboratory. But I hope this answers your question. Uh, thank you. And uh, hand over to you, Caleb. Thank you very much, Luke. Uh, we still have quite a few questions uh, to come, so we'll do our best to answer them uh, as well as Luke. And uh, so sit tight. So the next question is, how can drone to map be integrated with S3 ArcGIS, or can it be done as a standalone? Over to you, Luke. Yep. Uh, thank, thanks for this question again. Yep. Uh, drone to map is actually can stand alone, and all the processing. Uh, uh, data, uh, auto photo, or the DTM, you can actually, uh, it's actually work well together with the ArcGIS Pro. So this data you can actually put into your uh, geo database, then you can actually utilize utilizing them uh, to in, inside the ArcGIS, ArcGIS Pro, uh, the desktop version. So the uh, it's actually uh, can 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 pump the data into the desktop version. So no issue on this. Uh, I hope this answer your question. Thank you, Luke. And the uh, next question. Um, how about replanting with nursery con considerations? Yep. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, replanting uh, nursery is actually uh, you you actually need to cite your where where is the best location for your nursery. So the nursery consideration will be on the uh, source of water because your nursery require a lot of water. So it actually should be accessible to your water. So from the uh, structure analysis, you are, you will need to find uh, you we can actually deploy the suitability modular 
that is actually available in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, from the test suitability modular, then you can actually put in parameter like accessible to the uh, river uh, for the source of the water. And then uh, on the, uh, of course, uh, you need to get a, a flat uh, land with uh, um, area, say, more, maybe uh, uh, four hectare. Uh, so you can actually specify the length required for your nursery. So all these parameters you can actually set in the suitability modular. So then uh, the site should be actually within a driving time to all the block, uh, say, uh, one uh, uh, two hour times. So all this you can uh, uh, put uh, uh, the put into the uh, wettage. So the modular can actually run and choose the best area for you for the nursery. So with all this information in place, it's actually very easy for you to run the uh, suitability modular for your nursery sighting. And I hope this uh, answer your question. Thanks again. Over to you, Caleb. Thanks, Luke. That was a great response. And uh, to the next question, um, how to design the lining in ArcGIS? Are there any specifications required? Um, yeah. Thanks for this question again. So lining is, uh, we can actually deploy a job processing tool in, uh, in the ArcGIS code translation. So this tool uh, allow you to actually pre uh, model your lining design based on the funding distance. So then after you have uh, put in the planting distance and then the generated uh, plant, uh, palm sighting. So this will actually form the basic for your lining design. I hope this answers your question. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. And to the next question, what is the overlapping percentage to fly the drone? So uh, for drone, uh, to get the uh, accurate, accurate uh, auto photo data, I think they have preset uh, based on different model that you are using. So for example, you're using the DJI. Uh, I think the default uh, is actually 60, 70% uh, uh, front and 60% uh, side. So I think all this uh, default uh, setting of your drone it's actually capable to give you a very good uh, auto photo uh, processing. So of course you can actually increase that to 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 get a good uh, auto photo uh, stitching. But of course the time that you are using to collect the data will be uh, will be more, and also the storage to actually store all your uh, aerial images will be more for processing. So this this is this is uh, some of the consideration that you have to uh, uh, put uh, uh, put in mind uh, in order for you to uh, uh, adjust your uh, over, uh, photo area photo overlapping. Um, so the the to uh, to um, simply uh, to answer your question, yes, my um, default setting is good enough to go, but you always can uh, refer back. To your drone provider, what is the best recommended uh, overlapping uh, that uh, is actually good for processing? So I hope this answer your question. Thank you. Over to you, Caleb. Thank you, Luke. And uh, I think the next question is also slightly related. So does the app, does the Arcus Pro uh, drone processing tool do 100% of the palm counting? Um, thank, thank, thank you for the question. So uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, I think it's very good that uh, this uh, this question to be brought forward. Um, the the time counting is actually we actually using the MV module under the crop science. So time counting, uh, of course, depending on the uh, the drone images. Uh, what what you uh, what you see is what you get actually. So then it actually uh, train train the system uh, using machine learning. 
and to actually recognize. Of course, there is no 100% uh, system uh, in, in, in the commercial that can uh, accurately detect each and single uh, pump. So I will say that uh, the machine can do 95% uh, of the job for you. So the remaining 5%, uh, you still need the manual validation. So then it will give you a high accurate data for your future, future planning and budgeting. So uh, the answer is no for 100%, but, uh, but majorly uh, uh, work can be done uh, by the system. So you still need the validation, uh, uh, a minimum uh, human in intervention validation uh, is actually required. Uh, I hope this answer. Uh, over to you, Caleb. Thank you, Liu. I hope that answers your question, uh, uh, dear participant. And the next question is How will the, how can the lining assistance uh, help in terrace planting point lining? So, uh, thank, thanks for the question again. Uh, I hope that I catch your question correctly. How, how so, um, uh, yes, terrace, uh, first we pre-model the terrace line. So from the terrace line, uh, you know where to cut your terrace. So th this will make available in your mobile phone for, uh, for your uh, lining assistant. So then your bulldozer is actually, uh, uh, following this terrace line during the lining assistant. So of course, uh, lining gen, they still can use their uh, measurement to reconfirm uh, this uh, terrace uh, line uh, pre-model is actually good to go. So this is how we actually deploy the uh, lining, uh, the terracing line for lining assistant. So I hope this answer. Thank you again. Thanks, Luke. And um, the same participant has also asked the, uh, another question, I think it's related. Uh, is the method same, the same with the uh, with a straight line lining? Um, so for the elevator area, uh, 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 at most, mostly at the Healy, uh, the lining is actually according to the terrace line. So we pre-model the planting hole, the planting site, it's actually based on the terrace line. So we can actually model the uh, terrace with the width. So we place the uh, standard planting dist uh, distance um, uh, predetermined by your uh, uh, company. Say you get the front, uh, uh, ceiling front with five meter canopy only. So you can have a closer distance in between the planting. For example, 8.5 meter. So the uh, the 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 planting point uh, 8.5 is actually model based on the terrace line. Uh, it's actually di uh, different from the modeling that we are actually done in uh, flat land. So flat land is actually using the triangular method and hexagon that we actually pre uh, this pre pre model and decide where is the actually potential planting point. To be sited on the ground. So uh, for the elevated uh, hilly area, we actually using the terrace line. Uh, of course, the terrace interval is actually correlated with your uh, uh, planting distance. So that actually from the uh, terrace line. So the terrace line uh, using the same uh, planting distance that make out the interval. Then we pre-model the point on top of this terrace line. So I hope this answer. Uh, thanks for the question and over to you back. Uh, back to you, Caleb. Thanks, Luke. Now, the next question and the final one before we run out of time. Um, for the NV crop science module, do we need to purchase the additional NV license or we have it as a separate tool in ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro? Yes, uh, thanks for the great question. So uh, yes, I think it's good that we clarify on this. Under this uh, uh, re uh, geo-precision replanting package, we already uh, package 
the MVs uh, module into the uh, application. So once you acquire, acquire the package, uh, the module is actually within uh, the application for you to use. So, but uh, if you are if if you if you like to purchase uh, uh, the MD module, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, MD module is actually a standalone uh, application that you can actually purchase uh, separately for you to actually run the pan counting uh, solution. But uh, MD module under the crop science uh, is not only uh, not only uh, uses for uh, count counting. You can actually do more from there. So when you when you purchase this uh, module uh, uh, as a standalone uh, application, you can do image analysis. Mm -hmm. You can do all the tree health uh, conditioning. So different different things can be can be actually uh, done under this module. Uh, for detailed information, you can actually um, uh, uh, you yeah, can actually find from our uh, the reference website un under the crop science uh, MB module. So you can actually look at what is actually capable under this. So to 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 cut short the answer, uh, the answer is yes. You need to purchase. Uh, but under the Joe Position Agriculture, Agriculture Solution is already included into the package. Uh, thanks for this. Over to you, Caleb. Thank you very much, Luke, for all the questions you've answered. Now, dear participants, that's all the time we have today. And if we have not answered your questions, do not worry. We will surely reach out to you with the response by email. And just a little about what's coming up next on our webinar series. On 9th of December, uh, we'll have a webinar series about ArcGIS Pro Beyond the Basics. And looking at uh, the ArcGIS Pro tools, the workflow, the essentials, and how to migrate from ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro. So do keep a lookout for the space at streammalaysia.com.my slash webinars. And please subscribe by dropping in your email to get info on the upcoming events and webinars. We would really love your feedback. So take the time to fill out the brief survey that you will see pop up at the end of the session. Further feedback or questions can be sent directly to events at sdreammalaysia.com.my. And finally, if you would like to rewatch this webinar or share with your colleagues, the recording will be shortly available on Estream Malaysia events page. Thank you, Luke, and thank you everyone for joining us. And we will see you for the next Directions Live online webinar series. See ya.